What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to XJW Diaries. My name is Justin, and welcome to what is probably one of, if not the deepest video on this channel so far. And with that in mind, this video is not going to be for everybody. But for certain people out there, this is going to be for you. And for a select group of people, this may be exactly what you are looking for. And it may be the seed that grows into something much larger. You never know. So today I have a follow-up interview with Dina. And I did her first interview back in January earlier this year. And in that first video, she talked mostly about her life as a witness, the things that she experienced as a witness in the organization, such as being forced into an arranged marriage at a very, very, very young age, along with many, many other things that I'm sure many of you who left the organization can relate to. But towards the end of that first interview, she talked about the work that she does down at her healing resort in Ecuador. And in this new follow-up interview, we're going to go much, much deeper into that work that she does and the plants that she uses to facilitate this work. So again, very, very, very deep video. It's not going to be for everybody, but for those of you that are ready for something deeper, for those of you that are the explorers, this is definitely going to be for you. Now, since a lot of these topics are going to be brand new to anybody coming out of a group like the Jehovah's Witnesses, what me and Dina would like to do is invite you all to watch this video. But as you're watching it, if you have any questions about this topic, any questions, even ones that you would be afraid to ask or embarrassed to ask, please ask them. Leave them in the comments below, and then we will do another follow-up interview where we will answer your questions. So with all that being said, here is the follow-up interview with Dina. I really hope you guys enjoy this. All right, well, Dina, thank you so much for coming back on the channel. This is definitely gonna be one of the most deepest, if not the deepest video on this channel. So it's not gonna be for everybody, but for some people out there, this is going to be exactly what they've been looking for. So uh, really happy to have you on. Um, yeah, yeah. So in the, in the last interview that we did, you talked about your story. Mm -hmm. And at the tail end of it, we talked a little bit about the type of work that you do um, down at your healing center in Ecuador. Mm -hmm. So in this interview, we're going to just go all the way in on everything you do down there. And to start out with, um, I mean, like I told you, I, this this where to start has been has kept me up all night last night <laughs> because of where we can go. But I think it's best just to meet people where they're at. Just considering that we're we're majority of the audience out there on this channel is going to be people that have either just left the Jehovah's Witnesses or are in the process of leaving. Um, people that have been out for a while and they're still going through that healing process. And when you're leaving that type of religion, especially coming from a you know Western mindset, a lot of the things that you're going to talk about, they have no exposure to, you know. Uh, neither did a lot I. Of time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, and neither did I. Yeah. So yeah, so let's let's meet them where they're at in that case, um, and just try to ground it a little bit. So can you just talk about what? Just a, just a brief overview of what type of work that you do there for people that didn't catch that last half of the interview. We talk about meeting people where they where they're at. Mm -hmm. Just this kind of a recap. If you if you didn't watch my life story, I came from five generations of Jehovah's Witnesses. I was baptized at ten, pioneering at eleven. I did a twenty years in full time service. I was in the religion for thirty eight years. And I believed it with my whole heart. So for those of you out there that are just barely waking up, or if you've been woken up for a while, I just want you to know that I completely, completely, completely know what it's like. I know the box that we've been in. And I know that when we come out, we've got this massive reprogramming task in front of us. And I, and I understand how overwhelming it is. You know, we're, we're sometimes we're just dealing with basics, like how do we create friends? I mean, we're, we're dealing with some day-to-day uh, -day life reprogramming. And so I know this might be kind of a bigger picture, but I love sharing this bigger picture because 
We left the religion for freedom. Freedom to choose what's right for us. Freedom to let go of any limiting beliefs. Free to say, what the heck? You know, I believed this my whole life and it was completely wrong. So if we could be so completely misled by a religion, what other things could potentially be limiting us? So for me, I kind of felt like when I got out, not only did I need to question everything religiously, but everything else underneath <clears throat> that was forbidden, you know, that was demonized, all of these other kind of things was like, okay, well, so if they're wrong, then, then they're wrong about every, we need to question everything, you know, um, even yoga and meditation was demonic and frowned upon. So, you know, plant medicines, that's something that absolutely was frowned upon, you know? And so that's what we're going to be talking about today is opening our mind, being open to the possibility that some of the other judgments that we might have might also be limiting us in some way. And just the way that maybe we never would have imagined ourselves leaving the religion. Maybe you've never imagined learning about plant medicines. And the ones we're going to be talking about today is psilocybin, which is magic mushrooms, San Pedro and ayahuasca. So I know how weird this might sound, but let's challenge those thoughts because you know what? We're already, we already dived in the deep end by questioning religion. So we're already in the deep end. We might as well start challenging any other prejudices that we might have about other things because they were influenced by the religion. Exactly. Oh. Oh no, I got it. Okay, yeah, exactly. So, um, why don't before before we go too deep into the into the the plant medicines, just to just to give people an idea of, especially coming from a group like the Witnesses, you are so influenced by what other people do, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, can you briefly just talk about without going too specific? I you you know don't want to get into people's private business, but. Can you briefly just say the type of people that normally come down to your retreat, what they're looking for, and what happens when they leave? I mean, for every person, it's going to be different, but just an yeah. overview. And I mean, of course, you've had people down there that people would not expect <laughs> to yeah. come to a place like that. Yeah. So I, I was one, <laughs> you know, 10 years ago. I was a regular pioneer in the Dominican Republic, and now I'm a plant medicine woman on the side of a mountain in Ecuador. So <laughs> I think when we leave the religion, there's probably two, maybe three categories of, of mentalities. There's definitely a mentality of a specific type of person that feels lots of stuckness, lots of regret, almost like a quicksand kind of mentality. And they, they, some people don't come out of that. There's another mentality. There's another mindset that says, you know what? I'm going to thrive. I'm going to do this as fast as I can. I've lost so much time. I want to be on a rocket ship to figure out my head and figure out how to, how to, how, what, what am I missing? What am I, how do I do this as fast as possible? And those are the kind of people who usually tend to be the ones that are, that are open-minded, that are curious, and they want to take advantage of the freedom to the most, most, most possible potential, I guess. Does that answer your question? Yeah, that answers it. Yeah. Um, and then what what is typically the the effect when they leave um i know last time you mentioned that you had some people down there that came from other religious groups mm -hmm, mm -hmm. people down there that were in politics you know and they yeah, yeah. they go down there for healing so what what typically happens when they leave what, what, what effect does it have on them nobody knows exactly what to expect <laughs> you know no matter how much I educate, no matter how much I describe, 
there's no describing how this reaches into your brain and rewires it and creates neuro neuroplasticity, how it reaches into your heart and just seems to just bring out whatever it is that you didn't even know was there. It is so transformative. Nobody ever knows what to expect. And hands down, everybody across the board has always said, whoa, I had the expectations, but it just, the plant medicines just absolutely blew it out of the water. I've heard, and I believe this myself too, that one plant medicine session is worth about five years of therapy. Typically when people come down, they're coming down for seven to 10 days, something like that. And depending on the individual, we do anywhere from three to five different sessions of plant medicine. So seriously, you're looking at an intensive you know, if it's five years of therapy, you're looking at like 15 to 25 years of therapy crammed into this very short time period. And I think part of, well, one of the reasons why it's so effective is because it's so intense. Typically when you're doing some sort of therapy, which I highly recommend everybody out of the XJWs does, when you do a therapy, you know, you're doing an hour to an hour and a half once a week, and that's great. But when you come here for seven to 10 days, it's this immersive you know, we're doing the plant medicine, we're doing integration, we're doing, we're figuring things out really fast. It's you're dedicated in this concentrated time period and it's life altering. It is literally life altering. Not only are there healings that happen, not only are we healing traumas, not only are we digging deep and uncovering you know, so that we can, so that we can thrive, but you know, there's also this massive transformation that happens with your, with your view of, of, of the world, you know, that the it's, it opens up this box and you realize that it's not a box. There's a galaxy of ideas and potential. And it's like, it takes you from this level to, ooh, I mean, it's, I, I think one of the biggest things that I love about it the most is how much it opens you up to what's possible, what's possible with your healing, what's possible with life, what's possible with energy. And it's just like, it's almost like you just look at your previous life and it feels like we were, we were an ant, you know, we were just like this teeny tiny <clears throat> fraction of what we could be. I, I mean, and like you said, everybody's experiences are different. But that's kind of it in a nutshell. I mean, everybody ends up kind of just feeling like, you know, their head is blown into this galaxy of potential of what you could potentially accomplish, what you could potentially become. That's a great way of explaining it, actually. Yeah. And it's almost a trick question because yeah. for everybody, it's going to be different. <laughs> um, just to just to ground it a little bit more before we just dive all the way in on it, <laughs> it's going to go deep. Um, just to ground it a little bit more for the people that are more skeptical, people that are more uh, science minded. What what these uh, so in a Western mindset, right? If you have major emotional issues, major trauma that you're trying to work through, major depression, um, it's basically go to a therapist get on some antidepressants, you know, that, that's, that's basically your, your main options there. Mm -hmm. What these medicines do, um, and from a Western mindset, a lot of these, a lot of these things are not looked at as medicines. A lot of these substances right. are looked at as, I mean, they're on the schedule too. Right. They're looked at as party drugs. That's, that's yeah. that if you have any, any knowledge of, of these things, like you hear magic mushrooms, you're thinking of people going to raves, right? Yeah. But yeah. what these things do, uh, when they're used in the way that Certainly. stems back to ancient history. Yep. Ancient, I mean, stems back to Bible times, if we, if we want to go there. <laughs> uh, yeah, what right. these things <laughs> do um, is they literally allow you to reach into your, your subconscious mind. And mm -hmm. people that are out there that are more science-based, you know how much that impacts how you view yourself, how you view the world around you, your mm -hmm. everyday actions. And when you grow up witnesses or any environment that, is, that has a negative impact on your upbringing that puts an imprint on your subconscious mind which can have a negative impact on 
basically your entire life, all the actions that you do, what you expect for yourself, what you, the way that you allow people to treat you, the list yeah. goes on really. And all these things are kind of on, on autopilot, you know, but um, these substances allow you to literally re rewire your subconscious mind which has a big impact on your conscious everyday waking state. Um, and you know, like, like she said, a lot of this stuff is just, there is no words for it. There's no words, but yeah. what, what, what people can say is that they've done. And what I can say after my experience is that it felt like I had, I had done several, several years of therapy mm -hmm. in just, in just a few hours yeah. and there is an impact. And I could say for myself, it, I would not be who I am today had I not had those experiences. Yeah. So um, with that being said, um, why don't we start with, why don't we start with the mushrooms? Because that's gonna be the one that most people have heard of. Okay. And again, most people's idea of it is as a party drug, you know, um, that's how it's normally used. Well, here and in the United I, States. that's why they were banned. That's why they were yeah, banned. Yeah, exactly. As mm -hmm. much experience as I have with mushrooms, both in my own use, my own healing, and helping other people. Dude, I cannot imagine doing that with alcohol in a crowd of people with music. Like, worst idea yeah, ever. So, a horrible trip. Disclaimer don't do that. That is not what mm -hmm. we're talking about. <laughs> we are not yeah. talking about <clears throat> using these recreationally. I mean, there'll be people who are like, oh, you know what? It, you know, it alters your visuals and it's awesome. That is also not what we're talking about. We are talking yeah. about unlocking mental potential we are talking about this therapeutic use yes Kids, don't do this at home <laughs> yeah yeah and, and another disclaimer we do not condone the use of illegal substances <laughs> so Absolutely there you go <laughs> and by the way i'm in ecuador so anything i say yeah, it's legal like, down there it's legal <laughs> down there yeah <laughs> and there's other places where it's all like canada it's, it's legal yeah so um and even in the united states there's some some areas i know washington oregon colorado yeah. have uh relaxed their rules relaxed it, at least yeah. when it comes to to mushrooms and part of the, the big reason of that uh i'm, I'm gonna let you i don't want to speak too much i'm gonna let you go no, in you're but fine, you're fine. just want to say just to keep grounding it for people especially the more science-minded people and people who only have a view of this of religion saying these are drugs and drugs are bad um right now there are several high uh universities uh john hopkins um there's a few others i think mit is some other ones maybe you know that are doing studies with these substances and they're doing studies on people that have um uh terminal cancer things like that where they are they they are literally getting ready to die they are doing these studies with people who are veterans who have seen action who have major major ptsd people depression. who have drug issues yeah depression and what they have found in these in these studies studied by scientists is that with just one session of these substances the army veteran who has major ptsd they're fine yeah it sounds crazy but they're fine you can yeah. i encourage you look this up yourself yeah you will see many results <laughs> Mm -hmm. they're, they're either either their PTSD is basically cured or it's at least to a point where they can deal with it. People who have major substance issues like heroin, like hard, hard drugs, they've been to rehab several times. They still can't get off of it. They do this one time. They never touch those substances ever again. People yeah. who have depression, literally their depression is cured. They're, they have no more need for being on antidepressants. So this is how powerful this stuff is and it is being studied in a scientific environment. So again, it's not just something to party with. It's not just, you know, something for the hippies. The, people are studying this stuff because it has real results. And those results, again, goes back to ancient times. This is not just something new. So um, yeah, so can you please go into the the psilocybin and um, mm -hmm. its history and just its effects and how, how you guys use it down there. So psilocybin, like you mentioned, it is something that literally humans have used for thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of years. Um, it's, it's something that has helped human development is something that has been used by humans forever. They're non addictive. That's, I think, something that's super important. People always ask, you know, is it is it going to create a drug addiction or something like that? Absolutely, 100 percent. 
not. The, the psilocybin, once it's processed by the body, what it does is it binds to the A1 receptor, serotonin receptors in the brain. There's a lot of these A1 serotonin receptors in the visual cortex, which is why a lot of people have the visuals, the enhanced visuals. A lot of people experience enhanced audios. Those are some of the physical effects. As far as for how it helps heal the brain, in layman terms, the best way that I'm going to describe it is that most of our issues are in the unconscious part of the mind. And the conscious part of the mind is trying to figure, trying to figure it out. <clears throat> a lot of times we are our own worst enemy. So for example, let's say that we're holding on to an emotion in the unconscious part of our mind, um, you know, anger, resentment over trauma or something like that. The conscious mind might realize that, oh, you know what? Forgiving this person is a good idea, but they don't deserve it or it's part of who I am. It's our conscious mind that gets in the way. It's our, it's our thoughts that get in the way. And what, so what, what all of these plant medicines do is it's almost kind of like it lowers the firewall, so to speak, between right brain and left brain function, between conscious and unconscious function. And it allows you to access objectively the rest of your brain. And that's brilliant because it's almost kind of like it, it shuts off the, it shuts off the part of us that's blocking ourselves. That's the, I think that's the real beauty of it is that whatever our, our thoughts are like, you know, that's, that kind of takes a nap. That voice takes a nap and we can dive into what are the emotions that are buried there and all of that. Look at these things objectively and release it. That's why it's so, that's why it's so effective. Just kind of as a side note too, the power of the unconscious mind is not to be underestimated. Uh, I recently, I recently was doing research on the information that the brain takes in. The human brain takes in approximately 11 million bits of data per second. 11 million bits of data per second. The unconscious mind is able to process approximately 40,000 pieces of data per second. And consciously, we're only aware of about 40, up to 40 is what they say. So this unconscious part of our mind that's processing 40,000 bits of information per second is a wealth of knowledge, wisdom, and it's our, it's our conscious mind that gets in the way of processing it because it's so limited. It's, it's like this huge funnel. And so what the plant medicines allow us to do is access all of that information that's in our head anyway. With psilocybin specifically, it creates neuroplasticity. Um, I wish they could do a, an IQ study. I literally wish they could do an IQ study to see if somebody's literally smarter. <laughs> after they've done psilocybin or not, because I wouldn't be surprised. We are literally unlocking this part of our brain that's just sitting there exploding with potential. I mean, it's just, it's just waiting to be unlocked. And that's why people have such profound experiences because it's literally like they dived into this pool of knowledge, this pool of, of information. It's, and they took off the limitations. So the amount of healing that can be done, the amount of processing, processing that can be done is ridiculously fast because the brain's a supercomputer, you know? <clears throat> I, think, I think the other thing that's important to understand too, I have a lot of people want to know if they're out of control, you know, what is the, what is the, what is the, uh, what are they gonna feel, I guess is probably, probably the best word. Um, this isn't like alcohol where you're drunk and you don't remember what's happening and you're not coherent and you're not, that's not what any of these plant medicines do. You are very aware, you are fully participating. You can fully articulate. You'll fully be able to remember the experience. You are fully participating. So it's not like you're just, you know, out of control and don't know what's happening. You're, you're very much aware of what your brain is doing and of, of what's coming out and what's happening. 
great explanation yeah really great explanation um and just to just to go into that subconscious a little bit more just give you guys an example um for those that you have that haven't done as much research on just the power of your brain so just imagine that throughout your whole upbringing you were told that the color red is evil right so throughout your whole life anytime you see the color red you just get kind of agitated right now imagine years years later right even after you have tried to convince yourself that the color red is not evil <laughs> you know you've realized that that's just a, a bogus idea but it's still in the back of your mind okay so years later you, you're at a party and you just feel yourself feeling off right you don't know what's going on otherwise you're having a good time but it's just something feels off later on you look at the pictures and you realize that the majority of the decorations at that party were red it's just that the lighting because of the lighting you just couldn't really see it and you were having such a good time otherwise you didn't really notice it but your subconscious picked up everything yeah and so that is the type of work that you can do with these these medicines is that you can reach that point where you were told that the color red is bad you can remove that bad programming and now you can go through your life go to that same party and not have any feelings of agitation because yeah. now you process that you've de you've deleted that yeah so, triggers. Uh, we often have no, we don't understand our triggers you know why am i irritated all of a sudden or why does this bother me we may not even like you said you may not even have realized that that's why your brain was reacting certain ways and when when we're using the plant medicines like i said it lowers that firewall and all of a sudden because remember, you've got 40,000 bits of information in the unconscious mind per second. And that means that every belief that you have, every thought that you have is based off of the conscious mind only processing 40. That's us accessing one thousandth of a percent per second of what the brain has the ability to do. The brain loves to learn. You know, our brain's not there trying to sabotage us or anything. For the most part, we're the ones that are limiting it ourselves by not, by not um, in, encouraging, by not feeding, by not opening even the conscious part of our mind to being able to understand how, how powerful the brain is. We say things a lot of times like, you know, I, I am an angry person, or that's just how I am, or I am an alcoholic as though it's part of who we are as a human being. We don't always, the conscious mind can, has a harder time distinguishing these things as just a program. It's just a piece that's in the unconscious mind. Our thoughts are not who we are. They have nothing to do with who we are. We grow. We change our beliefs. And when we're, when we've got this, you know, teeny tiny funnel of the unconscious mind, or excuse me, of the conscious mind, you know, we're peering in this teeny tiny peephole into the unconscious mind changes a little bit slower. We really have to work on it. We really have to be reading books and, and be so consciously aware of shaking up our thoughts. And the plant medicine just gives it to us on a silver platter. It's like, here you go, sweetheart. Here's <laughs> here's what needs to be cleaned up. Here's what needs to be let go of. Here's what's not serving us well. And consciously, sometimes, like I said, it's hard to recognize that. It's hard to recognize how we're limiting ourselves. But the brain knows. The brain knows. And this, and this is why you hear a lot of people say who have done these things that if every politician, if every relig religious leader had to do these substances, we would, have, we would live in a much different world, <laughs> much different. We would not have the same issues that we have. Yeah, and completely furthermore, different. you wouldn't need a religion or a government to tell you don't do this or don't do that. Exactly. You know, this is what's, what's moral. That would not be needed because another thing about these substances is that you have to see yourself in the way that you don't normally do. Yeah, you have to see even if you think you're, I mean, like myself, I think I'm like, you know, try to be a good person, try to be a nice person. But there's even then just due to your upbringing, due to things that you don't realize that you're doing, you may be acting in a way that's that's hurting people. And when you yourself. take these things, 
<laughs> yeah, or hurting yourself. Yeah. Right. And when you take these things, you get to see that. And it's not in a punishment way. It's just more in a, you know, be aware of this kind of way. This is this is something it's that you're doing. Like a blindfold off kind of way almost. Yeah. It's really gentle too. I mean, it's almost like very gentle. Oh wow! Yeah. It's like your eyes are always, for the first time. It's like you went from Wizard of Oz watching a movie in black and white to Technicolor. <laughs> <laughs> and, and there's always like this this voice saying, "But it's okay." You know, there's always this. It's okay. It's okay. You know, there's this thing, but it's okay. You know, yeah. and and it, yeah, again, it's it is very hard to explain a lot of this stuff. Yeah. There is just no words in, in any in any language to explain There's, a lot of these things. There really isn't. Um, just a just um, another another side point that I wanted to bring up too is because of the potential, the fountain, that wellspring of knowledge that we have in our unconscious mind. I am so thrilled that these are finally being explored and studied. Actually, you know what? I can't. I don't even think I can say that about all of them. I think they're pretty much only studying psilocybin. I don't know how much research they're doing on the other on San Pedro or the ayahuasca, which is in the DMT family. I, I don't know what. Yeah, it's, it's just pure pure DMT yeah. and psilocybin, for, and yeah. then LSD. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so they're studying mainly PTSD, addiction, depression, and that's great. Um, that's a start. That's awesome. But they're so specific in their demographics. You know, you have to be between this age and this age, you gotta qualify and blah, blah, blah. And they're doing it in a sterile lab kind of environment, obviously, which has to be done for scientific purposes. And they're still coming up with great results, but it is the tip of the iceberg of, the, of what these actually do. There are things that these plant medicines do that are not quantifiable. That's why when we're trying to explain how explainless it is, how impossible to explain it is, it's because when you, how do you define connectedness? How do you define in a scientific study openness and oneness with the universe with universal energy. How do you describe the feeling that shackles have been taken off of you and you, you feel like you are whole for the first time, maybe in your life. And these are long-term effects too. This is not something that you're just doing in the couple hours of the plant medicine treatments. These are, these are long-term effects. How can they sign? How can they even quantify that? How? I, I mean, so while they're having these great results, what I'm sharing from the on the ground perspective, you know, I'm here in the dirt. I'm here in the trenches. We're we're doing this for people, not because it's in a lab and because they fit the demographics. It's because these are for everyone. These are for everyone. And oh, it just as a side note too, I don't think that this this is definitely not the kind of thing that you do it once and that's it. This is not take a pill and you're, everything's solved. This is a, these are processes. These is, this is also a healing journey. So I have, I have people that, that have come down every six months. I have people that have done it once a year. Personally, I do, I, I rotate through them and I do it once a month because it is a healing experience. And then, and not only it's a healing experience, it's a mind opening experience so that you have access to things that you didn't have access to before. Once the, once you've gone through the healing part, once you've released the negative energies, once you've released the limiting beliefs, man, then there's gifts to be unlocked. Then there's talents to be unlocked. Then there's this, it just explodes on this whole, whole other, whole other level. And remember, I was a JW for 38 years. I was, I was you. I know what you're thinking and I know how bizarre this sounds. So stick with us here because I, I get it. I'm on your, I'm, I'm on your team still. I still know what you think. <laughs> I still yeah. don't know how bizarre this sounds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's there is no way to explain this stuff yeah. uh, without without it sounding a little bit crazy. And I, I mean, I just wanted to say you you were reading my mind uh, with a lot of these clinical studies. They are seeing things that 
they can't explain. I read yeah, your mind think... because of the plant medicines. <laughs> 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 but yeah, they all, all pretty often actually they experience things that that they can't explain, and it, and it's actually led to um, some reframement of just their beliefs about what consciousness right. is. Right. Um, exactly. In fact, there's a lot of science happening. Well, one of the reasons I wanted to do this interview before I have have another video I want to do, but I want to do this one first, mm -hmm. um, just because there's been new science saying that. Our brain is not like a computer. It's not our consciousness. Yes, that's Everything that's going on is not localized here. Our yes. brain is actually more like an antenna. Yes. And well, we, you know we what? Feeding in something that is us from somewhere else. Right. That's okay. that's coming from science, not from well, spirituality. Think about, this, that's from think about this. That eleven million bits of information that's coming into your mind every second. How big does that antenna? How big does that field of awareness have to be? So that every human on the planet is processing or is is inputting 11 million bits of information per second. You know what's a perfect example? I sent you a text message and you immediately you're like, oh, yeah, you know what? I was just thinking about you. That is not, you know, the potential of consciousness, the potential of the human mind is off the chart so much more than what we understand now. And you know what, too? Coming from the JW perspective, we were taught, brainwashed, sure, we have this amazing capacity because we were meant to live forever. And so we're just going to have to just put up with being limited because wait until paradise and then we'll experience the full potential. Well, there is no paradise. So let's tap into that. Let's unlock that potential because there is no waiting for paradise and forever. The, this, we, ha we have the brain now and we have the tools to do it. So you know what? Let's rocket ship forward into healing. <laughs> and depending on how you live, you're already, at, you're already in paradise. You're there. Yeah. Yeah. And just, you just have to open your eyes wide enough to realize it mm -hmm. and shift your perspective enough to realize it. Because a lot of us are... are Again, it goes back to the subconscious. We and, and our training, we think that we deserve less. We think that we're so bad and we deserve punishment. And so we subconsciously look for ways to, to prove that to ourselves and to punish right. ourselves. We're making hell for ourselves. You don't have to believe in it. You're, yeah. You would make it for yourself if you believe that's, that's what you deserve. But you can also make paradise for yourself if you believe that's what you deserve. So um, before we move on to the next one. Like, bad trips? Ooh, uh, yeah, I'm good. I'll go there. Yeah, let's, let's do it. Let's do that, that, let's that in the so if you've done any research on, on psilocybin, on magic mushrooms, you're going to hear this term. <gasps> it was a bad trip. Okay. All right. So I'm going to tell you why. There are emotions inside our mind that can be very, very, very intense. As humans, we have a tendency to have the opinion that if it's hard or if it's intense or if it's in the in the negative emotion category. And I say that with quotations because, you know, we what we label as bad is not always bad. Anger has a purpose. Sadness is sometimes appropriate. Fear is sometimes appropriate. But what what happens is sometimes it gets stuck and we're we're stuck in those emotions and that's when they're not healthy and they can become very intense we've lived our entire life avoiding intense and how's that working for us so now we've got these deep-rooted intense emotions and when they come out depending on the set and the setting depending on the circumstances when you access one of these intense emotions, it can feel like a bad trip. Not only can it feel like a bad trip, but it could actually be bad depending on where you're doing it. So for example, let's say that you take it with a bunch of people. Let's say you take it in an environment where you don't feel safe. So that word set and setting is highly important because you're accessing the unconscious part of the mind, because the firewall is down 
and your brain isn't working like it is when you're at work and you know when you're going about your life you're in this open state of mind you can't be in crowds of people you can't be with alcohol you can't be with lots of other people that are also taking psychedelics because who's there to make it safe who's there to guide this who's there to help you say breathe this is okay let's talk about it what are you feeling tell me the experience explain what you're seeing and that is what we're talking about when we're talking about therapeutic use of this so <clears throat> i have done over 200 over 200 plant medicine trips um actually no over 200 psilocybin trips and i have not had one bad experience intense absolutely absolutely intense experiences but when you have somebody that is right there with you to walk you through it to ground you through it to remember that this is a healing experience and what the plant medicine is bringing out is not it doesn't it doesn't give you anything it's not making you feel like this literally all these plant medicines are doing is taking a lid off of the pot and then all the steam comes out and it's really hot but you know what the plant medicine didn't give you that feeling you're living with it all the time every day anyway and so literally what we're doing is we're just giving whatever is intense your is already in your head we're just giving it space to come out we're giving it a safe place to process we're giving it a safe place where we can explore it look at it for what it is and let it go in fact i hope for intense experiences because the more intense the emotions are that are coming out the more profound the long-term effects will be and the more profound the healing is going to be after after the plant medicine treatment absolutely yeah i fully 100 percent agree mm -hmm. the most intense experiences that i've had have also been nine times out of ten the most healing yeah. experiences that yeah. i've had because like you said, that steam has to be let out and you yeah. are living with it all the time. Yeah. It's just deep down in your subconscious. You don't know what's there. And that's um, why you're depressed it, and that's why you're discouraged. Exactly. Then yeah. that's why we just need to get yeah. it out. But one example I can give for myself um, and one of the ways that it's actually helped me with leaving the witnesses, because um, I believe I said in the past interview, normally I don't talk about this stuff because I just <laughs> know how people's perceptions are especially when yeah. you're coming out of a religion like the witnesses. That's why I don't even touch this subject, even <laughs> though it's had a big impact on, on my healing journey. But um, one of the ways that it helped me specifically, um, that I'm sure anybody can understand, leaving the witnesses. When I left, I left with a lot of anger. I mean, a lot of anger and hatred towards the watchtower. I'm sure anybody can understand why I would be feeling that way. And the issue with that just like Dina brought out, when you hold on to that emotion for too long, it becomes damaging to you. It can prevent you from having any real enjoyment and other aspects of your life because you're just, your brain is so focused on that anger. You, you're still renting out that, that mental real estate to them. So um, when I first got out, been out for a few months, one of the first people, one of the first women that I dated after I got out, date was going excellent, right? having a great time getting to know each other but as we're walking along through the park who do i see <laughs> a cart a witness cart and guess where my mind went to i mean here i was having a great time but as soon as i see them i immediately went to a negative place <laughs> that anger came out and i'm trying to still have a good time but inside there's this upset that has been that has been awoken yeah. And, you know, luckily it didn't completely ruin things. We went out a couple more times after that it was just, just more of a, a summer thing anyways. But that was one of the things that I noticed during my plant medicine experience was just how much that anger and hatred was taking the joy out of other aspects yeah. of my life. And doing it on my, by myself would have taken several years to get over that anger. With that plant medicine, I was able to get, get rid of it and one night yeah. and it's been permanent even doing this type of channel where i'm talking about the witnesses which normally would bring up those negative anger exactly. emotions 
I can do it and be balanced because of that experience. Yeah, I believe me too. So a lot of people have said, man, how did you go through that? You know, how did you lose your kids? How did you deal with that? Well, you know what? A lot of the processing has come from the plant medicines. Um, people, I, people said, you know, I laughed during the interview. Maybe that's a sign that I still have trauma. Actually, that's a sign that it's held well in my mind. It means that I'm not holding on to anger and resentment and fury and crying at the drop of the hat. It means that healing has occurred. We can't always change what we can't change the past. We can't change what's happened. We can't change the fact that I lost 38 years to a cult. But I can decide I don't want to live in anger every day. You know, we can decide, but it's but it's not always as easy as deciding. We might be wanting to decide that, but there's still things that are holding us back. And so this is the type of thing that can absolutely 100% accelerate that. Um, I'm going to get into the onion theory later. And so, but before I get into the onion theory, well, I guess I just get into the onion theory now that I brought it out there. We're layers and the, the plant medicines tend to cure what heal, uncover, what is ever is more on the surface first. So the more of these layers that we can uncover, the more profound the plant medicine can get and the, the deeper and the more profound the healings. Um, so I recommend, I highly recommend doing the coaching first because that kind of helps us peel off the layers. We'll talk about that later, but I wanted to share an example. And this particular guy, I had not, I had not done any coaching with him. So when he came to me, he wanted, he was hoping for this profound, um, spiritual experience, this connected experience. But like I said, we're in layers. That's why I also said that a lot of this is not a one shot done type of treatment. So he came to me wanting this profound experience, but I knew that he had suffered from extreme, extreme, extreme panic attacks. He had a hard time driving without becoming a basket case. he had suffered from extreme, extreme, extreme paranoia. And so when he tells me what he's hoping out of the experience, I always tell people, you know, we're going to set our intention. We're going to look for the answers, but honestly, the plant's going to heal what it finds first. So he takes, he takes his dose of psilocybin and probably within about 15 to 20 minutes starts going into his panic attacks. He starts, <laughs> you know, yeah, you make it stop, make it stop, make it stop. Take me to the hospital. I'm like, <laughs> that's not how this works, buddy. This is, there is no way to make this stop. This is a one way trip. So he, he's going into this intense panic attack. And so we start walking through it literally actually with him. We literally started walking through it. We started walking on a path here at the retreat and we're, and I'm explaining to him, this is an emotion that you're letting go. This is just a feeling. This is not reality. Look, everything's fine. And I'm coaching him. I'm using, I'm using my coaching skills, which by the way, I've been doing this type of coaching, not with plant medicines because I was a witness, but I've been doing this type of coaching therapy with NLP for over 20 years now. And those are some of the skills that I help people as they're processing these intense experiences. And, you know, he's had, he's had, that was intense. That was really an intense experience for him. So we're walking through it. He's explaining to me how he feels. I'm telling him to look at it from this third view perspective, explain what it looks like because you're consciously participating in this experience. And so probably about an hour to an hour and a half into it, his body starts relaxing, not his mind yet, but his body ceases to respond to the mind. He's no, he's now disconnecting. He's severing that physical, tangible body experience from the emotional experience. And that's what all of us do. We have this thought in our head. We have this emotion in our head and the body responds. That's why we get sick to our stomach. That's why we get nervous. That's why our blood pressure goes up when we start thinking about things. And what the, what I, what this experience was, what is, is his brain unlinking his body from the emotion that was just going on in his head. And, and slowly the panic attacks start having less, less importance. All of a sudden he's like, yeah, yeah, I feel panicky. 
but his body was no longer responding. And he was starting to realize that, okay, this is just a thought. You know, there is no proverbial lion that's about ready to eat me right this second. And he starts calming down. And then all of a sudden he starts realizing, wait a second, this is, this is in my head. And then we sit down and then he was able to enjoy the rest of the experience. And he is probably one of the ones that refers the most people to me here, him and his family. After he was done with that session, they were like, what did you do to this guy? He's not even the same guy anymore. He's, he's calm. He doesn't freak out anymore. And that's been over a year. That's I gave, I did that for him over a year ago and the effects have held all this time. He was just telling me a couple of days ago, he's like, you know what? That was the best experience of my life. He has not had any sort of panic attacks since then. Now he didn't get the experience that he was hoping. He didn't get this spiritual divine experience, but that's, that's, a huge healing that he had just with the one plant medicine treatment. So I'm hoping once he comes back into the country, he'll be able to get the experience that he was hoping for. Like I said, every experience for every person is different every time. And hands down, that poor dude, had he taken these plant medicines by himself, that would have been your classic bad trip. But because we're doing it in a therapeutic environment, in a setting of trust where everything is safe and they're, we're able to coach through it, it was probably one of the best healings that he's ever had. And I've, I've got dozens and dozens of stories. We should probably do like a whole video on just experiences and examples. Yeah, I can tell we're going to need more. more <laughs> we haven't even gotten into the other ones yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that, actually, let's go there. So. Actually, before we do, since we're already talking about, since we introduced the, the mushroom first, can you briefly just say what's unique about the mushrooms compared to the others? And then we'll go on to the, to the next. Okay. One. So the mushrooms, they are the medicine of the mind. This is a mental, a mental medicine. The other ones, San Pedro is a much more grounding. It's a much more masculine type of energy of a plant. It tends to be more physical. It tends to release body emotions that are held in the body. Maybe you've read about read the book, The Body Keeps the Score. Maybe you've, maybe you've been to a massage and you've had somebody rub a knot out of a muscle and maybe it makes you feel like crying. That's because our bodies do have there are not, everything's not in our mind. Some things are very tangibly in the body. And the San Pedro is a medicine that works with the body to release any, any, body type of type of energies that we need. So the San, the psilocybin is for the mind. The San Pedro is for the body and ayahuasca. Ayahuasca is your soul. This is your heart medicine. This is, this reaches into your core of who you are and, and brings out brings out what's in your heart, brings out what's in your soul. So when people come down here for treatments, I prefer being able to use all, all those three because then we've got the mind, body, and the soul combination. And it's just, it's a beautiful, beautiful experience. Since what we're doing here is also customized, I don't always use the three. Sometimes when somebody comes down, if they've already had experiences with psilocybin and um, maybe they feel like mentally they're clear, but there's their heartstrings are tied or there's just something in their emotional makeup that they haven't been able to figure out. Sometimes I'll have those people come when they come down. All we do is ayahuasca. We'll do three, possibly even five sessions of ayahuasca, depending on how long they're here. But the, these are very, very, very different medicines that heal in very distinct ways. And that mind, body, soul connection is just a really beautiful, beautiful Beautiful combination. Awesome, awesome. Let's, um, I think ayahuasca is gonna be the one that the majority of people okay. are gonna have some knowledge of. So why don't we, why don't we just briefly touch on San Pedro a little bit more, uh, if you have anything more to say on it. And mm -hmm. then let's, let's do a deep dive into ayahuasca before okay. we get too long. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So just, just kind of briefly, like I said, I or San Pedro, 
is they call it in Spanish, they call it el abuelo. It is, this is your grandfather. <laughs> All of the plant medicines, because, you know, obviously, even though the San Pedro is more of the tangible one that's working with our physical body, it's obviously still in, the, in our mind too. And we are unlocking that huge unconscious potential. So there is unlocked wisdoms and stuff like that. And I think that in general, the, 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 the learnings that we get from San Pedro tend to be very parental. They tend not, not, not just parental, but fatherly parental. Um, maybe that's a bad example if you have bad grandfathers and bad fathers, but it tends to be a little bit more of a practical advice. Um, men, I suppose, tend to be a little bit more like, this is the problem and this is how you need to solve it. And this is what you want to do versus the feminine advice. The feminine healing is more like, okay, a little bit more soothing. Let's express those feelings. Let's talk about those feelings. So the San Pedro being that it's a little bit more of the masculine energy comes across like a little bit more like, oh, this is what I need to do to fix this. You know, this is, this is the solution. Here's the problem. And you have kind of, you'll end up with kind of like this little bit more of awareness of what to do versus just a, an energetic release or, or an emotional release. That's kind of my San Pedro in a nutshell. That's awesome. Yeah, that's, that's a good explanation. I, I have no experience with that one, but based on what I've heard. That, well, yeah. of, of one of the last times I did the San Pedro on myself, I, you know, obviously doing the coaching with the XJWs and all this other kind of stuff, I deal with a lot of heavy emotional energy. I deal with a lot of abuse. I deal with a lot of trauma. And you would think that as a coach, I would be better at perhaps releasing that in myself than I am. And I, I do my grounding and I do my healing. But for, for a while, I was having pain, like really bad pain in my hips. And, you know, of course, I instead of, instead of looking at it energetically, I'm like, okay, well, you know, it's because I'm almost 50 and I need to exercise more and I need to do more yoga, stretching. And it's because I live on a mountain, I'm running up and down the mountain and I'm making all these outside excuses. So in this last, in this last San Pedro session that I did with myself, um, the, the fatherly advice was focus more on your physical, focus on your physical healing that I'm doing, you know, we've got this mind, body, soul. And the, the communication was, I'm really good at the mind and the soul and the body's the one that needs some work. And the, my, my legs, my legs started shaking like this and I could stop it. I could stop it, but it was almost like it took more energy to stop the vibration than it did just to let it go. And I felt a heat that was going through my hips. I was like, I could feel the energy leaving my hips and both of my legs are going like this. And I just, you know, just let it because this, there's no danger to these medicines. And I'm very well aware of that. So you just let it embrace it, flow with the river, go with it. And, you know, I have not, when it was, when I was done with that session, I have zero pain in my hips whatsoever. I felt like a 20 year old. I, I mean, the physical release, the physical healing from that was just push. It's mind blowing. Um, another time I had done it and I had this wicked, wicked tennis elbow thing. And I blamed it on the goats tugging me so much, or I blamed it on the dogs tugging the leash, but I had this wicked, wicked tennis elbow. It was so bad. I could barely even pick up a cup of coffee. And I did, I did the San Pedro. And again, I just felt like this overwhelming urge just to move, 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 move. And by the time it was done, I had suffered with that tennis elbow probably four or five months with no relief whatsoever. And by the time it was gone, and it's never, it's never come back. So obviously everybody's experiences are different, but these act, these very much so have the ability to release energy that's emotion that's stored in the body that's causing us problems that we're not even we're not even aware of. And that's, that I think is the beauty of the plant medicines versus our Western world. Now, obviously 
we need doctors. We need we need that we need we need medicine. We need the medical community. However, they don't always fully appreciate that maybe what's wrong with your elbow or maybe what's wrong with your joints, maybe what's wrong with your stomach isn't something that needs a pill. You know, maybe it's something that there's that there are other more holistic ways that we can heal. And I and this is where we really have to keep the open mind. We really have to keep the open mind because there is more than one way to skin a cat. There are many paths to healing. And this is a path to emotional, spiritual, physical healing that has no side effects. There's no, it's, it's, it's benign while it might be emotionally intense. It's there. It's not invasive and it's just, it's beautiful. This, this, these plants are on the planet for a reason. Yeah. And I'm so glad that we're able just to talk about this stuff because yeah. again, coming from the witnesses and just a Western mindset, Mm -hmm. Majority of people that even live in the United States have no exposure to this. Right, right. And right. It, it is, it's good to know. I mean, it's it's not right. for everybody, but if you feel called to it, it's an option mm -hmm. and it does work. And just to ground it again, for the people that are more skeptical, people more science minded, for the people out there that say these are just hallucinations, this is just all in your head. I just want to remind you, so is everything. Everything is in your head. All, yeah. all is mine, as they say. The placebo effect works. Exactly. That's yeah. If, if they take mine. away your your sight, hearing, smell, taste, mm -hmm. uh, sitting, feeling a touch, then where are you? Yeah. So literally, your entire perception of reality, you know, your five senses are all produced in the mind. Well, and, you um, know, scientific explanation. Just because something's not scientifically definable. Just because it hasn't been scientifically identified doesn't mean that it's not real. You know, gravity, hello, gravity has existed since the planet came into existence. And did they have, did we have scientific explanation for that thousands of years ago? Absolutely not. You know, then an apple falls on Newton's head and he's like, oh, gravity. We don't always fully understand how things work, but that doesn't mean they don't work. It just means we don't understand how it works and what is super important about these plant medicines is i'm we're not saying here's this brand new thing that we know nothing about these have been around for thousands of years and we can't scientifically define it but that doesn't mean that it's not working it doesn't mean that it's not real it doesn't mean that it's not provable it just means that we don't we're not there yet. And why? Why are we not there? Maybe because pharmaceuticals make more money? I don't I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't care why. But but honestly, I mean, this is not, oh hey, guess what? I just found this plant in the jungle and I ate it and guess what happened? No, 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 no. You know, here in South America, in Ecuador and in Peru, they found archaeological digs that have have evidence of ayahuasca for 10,000 years. You know, maybe that's how they were able to build pyramids here in Ecuador, you know, because they're, they're unlocking something in their potential. And because of politics, whatever, we haven't, we haven't gone down this path. Therefore, it's not scientifically definable. But that doesn't mean gravity is not real. It doesn't mean that they're not effective. It just means we're just in the beginnings of understanding the hows, but yeah. do you have to, but, but even at that, do you have to understand how, do you know how Tylenol works? Come on, Justin, tell me how Tylenol works with the body. You know, I mean, there's lots of stuff that we do that we don't understand. We don't understand. I think a lot of times we feel more comfortable if we have knowledge, which is the whole point of what we're doing here. You know, I've got some pretty nitty, nitty gritty on the ground information here. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't new. This is, we are not talking about anything bizarre. You know, we're not talking about anything new versus even the medical community. Sometimes the medical community comes out with treatments that are brand new, you know, and maybe they've got some research behind it, but they don't have thousands of years behind it. That's impossible versus these plant medicines. They have been safely used by humans maybe since the beginning of us being here. I don't know. Yeah, that's a, that's a great thing to say. And again, when it comes to 
to things that you know are not scientifically quantifiable um this is a great segue into the next plan which is ayahuasca because there have been a group of scientists scientists people that don't don't believe in anything right yeah, <laughs> yeah. If, if it can't be measured if it can't be quantified you know, uh, yeah then it, then it doesn't exist mm -hmm. and they were a group of scientists such ayahuasca and during that experience they had moments that can only be only be described as a telepathy of, yes of a yes. shared mind experience that that <laughs> according to science should not be possible right well I, although i would say according to newer science that views the brain as more of an antenna that's streaming in consciousness Quantum uh, physics. Th then it then it is more possible under that right. lens but either way according to what's written in the science books that should not be possible and yet a group of scientists had it happen Exactly. So um, let's let's talk about ayahuasca because that one has a a long history that goes back. We don't know how long it goes back. Years actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but we what we do know is that ayahuasca by itself will produce no real effects. Correct. Ayahuasca requires this other plant to be combined with it, and then the body can process it and produce the DMT Correct. effects. Correct. And when they go and ask these indigenous people how they found that other plant to make the ayahuasca work because imagine the amazon jungle has i mean how many plants thousands or is it millions it's millions and millions and millions and yeah millions. so how do you find that other one that just so happens to work with the ayahuasca now and I, I, maybe, I, maybe i shouldn't say because it would scare people but either way they found these two plants and it it works and, and it, it um, works yeah it works yeah and i think I think we just need to keep keeping in mind too. Our brain has this amazing potential. We have so much potential. They say we're only using, you know, 5%, some ridiculously small percent of our brain. So are these things demonic? No, no, they're not. It is literally unlocking what's already in your mind. It's unlocking what's already there. This there, I, I, it's, it's hard to describe. I mean, I, when I've, I've had a lot of people come down here and they, I, we work on making sure that everybody is really safe, you know? So if you're super skeptical, this doesn't feel like something that's right for you, then it's probably because you're not quite ready for it yet. That's totally fine. Everybody gets to that point when, <laughs> when it's part of their journey. But ayahuasca, ayahuasca gets into your soul. Okay. One of the first things, so one of the first things I'll talk about is if you've done any sort of looking up ayahuasca, you will research, you will find that ayahuasca is associated with what they call the purge. Okay. Which means that there is often vomiting. There is often there. There actually less frequently diarrhea, but there is there is a physical purge that can come with ayahuasca. That sounds horrible. Nobody likes to think about that. So we're going to think about that for a second. What causes that? Why is ayahuasca doing that? Where is the connection in healing with with that? First of all. Um, maybe you've heard that, well, first of all, this has nothing to do with your digestive tract. When somebody is purging on ayahuasca, they're not purging up what they've eaten. Although that can have an effect. If you come here and you've been eating McDonald's every day for months, you're probably going to have a little bit more of an upset digestive tract, but you are not purging food. You are purging emotion. I never would have expected to be a vomit expert, but here I am. <laughs> and I will tell you firsthand that I know when somebody is purging anger because the, the purging that comes with anger is very different than when somebody is purging up a, a sadness in their soul. When somebody is purging up fear, those are all extremely, extremely different versions of purging. And I bet you've never thought about that before because I sure never did until I started on this journey before, you know, most of the time we associate vomiting with food poisoning. And this is not what that is whatsoever. 
frequently when somebody is doing some sort of a purge, um, you might, you might, I might, I'll notice their facial expressions. Maybe they start to cry. I can tell that they have accessed something. And then afterwards is when, when they're throwing up whatever that emotion is. When we do the integration parts after the, after the plant medicine, hands down a hundred percent of the time, everybody agrees, man, that was not in my stomach. I thought about my dead sister, you know, I thought about the abuse or whatever. And yes, I was angry. That felt like anger. We are a hundred percent purging emotions. Okay. So let's get into the scientific part. Why? What? What? What are you talking about? All right. Let's talk about that. In our gut, our gut is researched for being what is called our second brain. There is a, there is research behind that. This, the gut has over a hundred million neurons in it more actually than the spinal column does our we have um like i think it's 90 percent of our serotonin is actually produced in the gut as far in other other uh dopamine gaba those are also produced in our gut so our gut is highly linked to our emotional state and our mental state is highly affecting our digestive tract, right? I mean, how many of us had to give a part on an assembly or, or part of the meeting and immediately we get sick to our stomach, right? We feel like we feel it in our stomach. With intuition, we talk about, oh, I feel it in my gut. That's because our gut holds emotions. I have, over the years, I have had hundreds of clients come to me with digestive issues and there are emotions in their gut that is where they are located oftentimes when i'm coaching somebody i will have them access a feeling and i'll say you know where does that where do you feel that fear i feel it in my stomach this is a one of the most unique ways obviously like i said i've been coaching for 20 plus years and i have never been able to access what is in the gut as easily as what ayahuasca can do it. And ayahuasca just gets into those emotions that are stored in our second brain and it, and it purges them. What, that's also why this is a lot different from any other sort of therapy that you can possibly do because most therapy goes about healing the mind and healing our psychology. And that's great. That's, that's great. But we have a second brain and I can't talk to the second brain. We can't. It's a much harder thing to access. And ayahuasca just has this beautiful gift of getting in there and saying, you know what? This doesn't serve you. You don't need this. This is the fear that you're carrying with us. Get it out. Um, even when you're sick, a lot of times you feel better after you've, after you've gotten rid of whatever's in your stomach. And the same is 100% true with ayahuasca. Once you've, once you've purged whatever negativity is there, you're good. Now, that is only a fraction, I think, of ayahuasca experiences. Maybe more so on the first couple of times of ayahuasca, but after you got a clear playing field. I mean, so think about this. If you wanna remodel your closet or something like that, right? You have to get everything out right? You've got, you've got things. If you're going to remodel a house, you've got the flooring, you've got the kitchen, you get the old out, and then you have a space for the new. You have the space to do whatever you have, restructure it, remodel it however you want. We are no different. What these plant medicines do is they help us remodel. They help us gut, gut out what no longer serves us. And then in, and then in other plant treat, plant medicine treatments, we're able to really, really, really get the enhanced version of ourselves. We're able to access other gifts, other talents, other, other ahas that we had no idea have been like sitting and resting in our brain all along. It's just, there, it's just, there are no words. There are no words to describe how fascinatingly beautiful these plants are. And just to just not to cut you off, but just to just to ground that part a little bit for the people that are more skeptical. Mm -hmm. If you go into California, Silicon Valley, you know, people that are working on 
the most advanced technologies that are out there. You know, people that are in the labs at Apple that you cannot get into without an eye, eye scan and a fingerprint scan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of those people, <laughs> a lot of those people have taken these substances and a lot of their ideas come from realizations that they've had yes. during these experiences. In fact, uh, if you studied uh, Steve Jobs, you know that there's this famous line that he told to Bill Gates that you should really try LSD sometime, right? So, um, not that, but just to say that a lot of these aha moments that we are that we are able to to benefit from today comes from these plants. A lot of the technologies, yeah. a lot of the advancements that we have today come from these. So. Yeah, and with ayahuasca, let me go into a little bit of DNA because that that is another mind blowing piece of the puzzle. So frequently with ayahuasca people will have an, a, a, a visual or something like that about some sort of past trauma that doesn't that didn't happen in their lifetime you know maybe and it's usually a lot of it can be very it can be traumatic like maybe a murder or something like that what the heck what the heck is that what is that why does it do that is it a hallucination is it not all right, so let's talk about that. We've heard about generational trauma. Everybody knows this is like a buzzword now. You know, we have generational trauma. It came from our parents, came from our grandparents, came from Adam, whatever. So we have this generational trauma. We've had this tendency to assume that that is something emotional and is something in our mind. Or is it, or is it different? Is it bigger than that? Um, scientifically, we've been able to map out about 10% of our DNA. And the other 90% of our DNA, they call junk DNA, which I hate that term. I hate that term because just because we don't know what it is, doesn't mean that it's junk. <laughs> we all have it. We've had it for thousands of years. What is the, why do we have junk DNA? What is this? Ayahuasca has a DNA helix that is very similar to human DNA. And the shamans believe that the, that the ayahuasca is able to unlock what is stored in our DNA that we are not aware of. So here I am and I'm looking at this and I'm like, how does that, how does that work? And, you know, I'm working with generational trauma and I'm working with healing past things that maybe we've inherited from our parents. And somehow ayahuasca coincidentally has the ability to bring these things to the surface so that we can heal it too. Is it in our DNA or is it in our imagination? I, Honestly, I'm not sure I care. I'm not sure I care. I'm trying to find a, a scientific explanation for what is unstudied. Um, like I said, this is, they've been doing this for tens of thousands of tens of 10,000 years at least. And there's no specific, specific type of answer for it. But ayahuasca is giving us generational images, whether it's a hallucination or whether it's actually something in our DNA I believe it's probably something in our DNA. I honestly do believe that because what else is that other 90% there for? At either, either way, once those things come to the surface and we integrate that afterwards, we heal whatever traumatic shame, guilt, pain, distrust. Um, I can't even tell you how many times somebody has had some bizarre, bizarre vision on ayahuasca and there are, and they're once we in once we do the integration work afterwards, they're like, you know, I feel this intense feeling that that's why I have low self esteem. That's where my low self esteem comes from, or that's where my shame has come from. It originated in this event, and then once once that is healed, it's gone. You don't have it anymore. It's completely disappeared. And I know that as we've been talking about these plant medicines, we've been talking a lot about trauma and healing the negative things and, and that. And I'm, I don't want, I want, I want a different focus here too, because they're capable of so much more than that. Obviously we want to be healed. Obviously we want to get rid of whatever weights are holding us down, whatever's holding us back. But if you think about it, if we can have generational trauma, if we can carry pain, you know, those kind of heavy, heavy emotions from, from the past, even if you're still, even if you still are pro Bible, 
um, inherited sin, the sins of the father going seven generations. Even the Bible says that we can have, we can have the, these weights from the generations past. This is a way of healing that. But, but what about unlocking generational gifts? You know, what, what has come from the past is not always trauma. What about, what about a generational gift? What about somebody in your past who had amazing self-esteem? What about somebody in your genetic code that was, that had a fabulous immune system or, 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 or had some other gift? If we, since these plants allow us the ability to heal trauma, that's what I really want you to take away from this too, is it's not just trauma. It is allowing us the ability to access gifts. It's the ability to access other things. You know, we're not just carrying garbage with us. We're carrying jewels. We're carrying gems too, both in our mind and in our DNA and in our bodies. And this is, this is a safe, clean way to be able to access all of that, to be able to purge what's in the second, second brain, to be able to heal generational trauma. And you know what? Maybe it's imaginary. I don't know. Maybe it's imaginary, but I know that people feel better after. And ultimately that's all I care about. If you feel better, if you feel better when it's done, that is, that is all that matters. Is it something bigger? I, I personally think it is, but I don't, I don't feel the need to have to define or understand. I, like I said, since people have been using these effectively and it is a hundred percent beneficial in my experience, I don't care how it works. I don't need to know. All I know is that it does just like Tylenol, just like anything else that I would take. These are things that are purging our mind, body, and soul, unlocking gifts and talents that we already have inside of us. And it's just, it's, it's beautiful. And the other thing that these allow you to, to tap into um, other than the healing and the unlocking of, things potential within yourself. Um, and I don't want to touch on it too much because I just know how people are, but, <laughs> it, <laughs> but it, it, there's also definitely more, more information. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's also definitely a spiritual side to this stuff. Yes. So much so that you have people who are very hardcore atheists, don't believe in anything. Mm -hmm. And they take these, these medicines just once and they're not atheists anymore. Yeah, uh, they have they have some belief in something. They may not be able to explain it. They, it's right. not going to align with any religion, really. Yeah, but no, absolutely. Is, not. Yeah, yeah, you're off the board. You're you're off the chessboard, as I like to say. It, it's yeah. you. You really are experiencing something that is that. Again, there's just there's no words for it. Right. And you, um, which is part of the reason why. Um, this is this stuff is not for everybody and in fact there there is people out there that actually should not take it especially if you have mm -hmm. a uh if you have any history in your family of any serious mental disorders that could it could actually cause you some disturbances there um but even back in ancient times the only people that were allowed to take these substances were you know the high chiefs and the the leaders of the of the group would take these get, get the the information and then feed that to the people um so nowadays, you know, it's it's more it's more for everybody who's seeking healing, but um, but it just shows, you know, it, it, there really is a group that it's not for. Not everybody's supposed to see. I mean, it's some some of my deepest experiences. I've had that thought, like, well, not everybody's supposed to see the other side of the of the veil like that. Well, but, maybe um, it's not even not everybody, but maybe not everybody is ready right now. Yeah, that's a good, that's a better way of saying it, actually. Yeah, Even that's, everybody's that's not ready right now. Mm -hmm. you, know, mm -hmm. you do need to have your, your box cleared. I mean, there are definitely limiting beliefs, fears. You know, probably when I'm working with XJW is probably one of the first things they ask is, you know, just like meditation is demonic and yoga is demonic. It does this, is this demonic? No, no, this is not demonic. But if a person's concerned about that, that's definitely something in the prep work that we want to talk about. Make sure that that your mind is OK, that you're that you feel safe, that you know that this is OK. So I'd like to just kind of yeah, go ahead. before you go there, I just want to because you brought up a very good point about 
And that's something that a lot of you know people's perception of these substances are coming from a group like the witnesses even more than the witnesses yeah i would say majority of christian-based religions have a this is going to open your mind up to demons view of these things Absolutely. i just want to remind you again this goes back to this is not these are something new these go back to ancient times now on this side of the world in north america south america we had san pedro uh, psilocybin, ayahuasca. On the other side of the world, they have other substances that do the same thing. Yes. So in the Bible times, for those of you that are Bible readers who think that the Bible characters have, have nothing to do with this, I just want to remind you that if you go, and this is in the history books, in Egypt, the areas where Moses would be at, they used the, I believe the lotus, lotus flower, which produces a very powerful DMT effect. Uh, some people would actually say we, we don't have the same flower that they had back then but if we did some people would actually say it's even more potent than ayahuasca um they also have traces in some of these uh museums that they studied the artifacts they found traces in the wine bottles of ergot ergot is gives you an lsd like effect yeah so in other words even in bible times for those of you that are bible readers these these substances were around and if you ask me and if you ask quite a bit of of the historians that are doing new research on this stuff these substances could have been one of their tools to be able to have these spiritual experiences that you read about in the bible no, in the, fact, island when you, patmos, the island of patmos where the apostle john was supposed to have been where when he wrote revelation is one of the most well known for psychedelic mushrooms yes look at the book of revelation so i mean i yeah. mean this is not something new and like yeah and you read in my mind uh, exactly what i was going to say if you when you have for those of you that actually do have one of these experiences and again as dina was saying a lot of time there's there's layers so you got to get to the healing healing layers first heal the trauma heal heal the pain and then you get down to where it starts you know yeah. only with the way that they often describe it as an ego death experience that's what i actually experienced before and when you have those experiences that are super you know just again off the chessboard <laughs> um you when you have that and then you go back and read the bible again oh it's going to hit way different yeah. and the way you would interpret it is going to be much different if you've actually had that experience because a lot of religious people out there a lot of their beliefs are based off of, of indirect experience just things that you read about in the book rather than being a direct experience of something that you experience that again can't even really be explained in english all you can do is just try to explain it with the words that we have available but even that's never going to touch what it actually was exactly exactly so i'd like to just talk for a little bit about how modern day applications of uh the modern day applications of this so specifically here for example ayahuasca a lot of the indigenous communities here, they actually start using ayahuasca around puberty. This is a community thing. They start very young, even as, even as young as eight and nine years old, they start using ayahuasca. So when you take into consideration that this is helping them purge emotionally, make sure that they're clean emotionally, tapping into their gifts, in the indigenous community, the use of these plant medicines is obviously completely different from a Westerner. We're coming to the table at what, 30, 40, 50, 60 years old, and we have never done any of these plant medicines. And so our, our application, our, our use of these plant medicines <clears throat> needs to be a little bit different because we're not indigenous and we haven't been doing this since pre-puberty. So, you know, you can you can find retreats here in South America where you can sit with a shaman and they do the traditional ceremony. And that is beautiful, especially for them. And that's that's beautiful for people who, who would like to have that kind of authentic, authentic kind of experience. But in those type of experiences, that doesn't necessarily do as much as it could. And the reason is because of what Justin was just mentioning about, you know, the onion theory. We are layers, we're layers, we are peel, we've got these onion layers to peel. So when I work with somebody who's interested in doing the plant medicine, I always suggest that we do the coaching first 
And there's multiple reasons why. First of all, it's so that we can peel back those surface layers. Had I done the coaching with the guy that suffered from panic attacks first, we could have, we could have fixed that. And then we could have fixed that in an hour session. And then he would have been able to have more of a profound experience. So, you know, from my way of thinking, if somebody's thinking of doing plant medicines, they're thinking of making the trip and everything like that, you might as well get as profound as possible. And being able to do the mind work first is highly, highly important. Um, when I, when I, as I've worked with shamans here, a lot of times these, these gringos or this Westerners come in and they're kind of like, what's wrong with you people? Well, a lot. I mean, our psyche is completely different from the indigenous people because coming from our high stress Westernized world, you know, where we don't deal a lot of times with emotions and we've got all of this trauma that we've never, that's accumulated we are better off applying these medicines in a more a meshed, a little bit more modernized type of type of environment so that we can have the most effect. So I suggest the coaching first, like I said, first of all, so that we can peel back the layers of the onion so that when you're ready for plant medicine, it can get really deep. The other reason why I think that's important is because I haven't done complete strangers. I've, I've not used plant medicines on total strangers. We talked about the set in the setting. So in my opinion, when the, when the guide, when the person that's going to be helping you is somebody that, you know, somebody that you've talked to, somebody that you've had deep conversations with, when you do hit one of those, one of those intense emotions, there's trust, there's confidence. There's, Oh, I know you, you know me. I can tell you this because I told you all these other things. Versus the traditional experiences in on retreats, they don't have that. I mean, oftentimes shamans might speak Quechua, maybe maybe some Spanish. Hopefully, they speak Spanish, but there might be this huge communication gap. On top of the fact that they're not told, they're not versed, they're not well versed with Western issues. They're not well versed with Western trauma because they don't have it. You know, a lot of times it's they they a little bit view it more of a self discovery. Which is, which is beneficial. I, I mean, that is absolutely 100% beneficial too. But a lot of us aren't aware enough to really be able to identify what is this about? What is, how do I integrate this? What do I do? What do I do with this? And so the integration process that we use here, we use the neuro linguistic programming, uh, the NLP so that we can really analyze what it is that's happened, what's come up, make sure that it's not something that's just been brought to your attention, but something that is completely released. And I feel like that is super, 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 super important part of the process of what we're doing here. Yeah, I, yeah, I completely agree. And so can you can you just give a brief overview of what NLP is just for people that haven't? Heard of yeah. it or didn't see you explain it in your last interview. Yeah, so neuro linguistic stands for neuro linguistic programming, and this was something that I learned back when I was I was still regular pioneering. It was back in two thousand five, and it's it's a brain hack. It's not like your traditional therapy. This is a way of crossing the right left brain, um, unconscious. But even the right left brain is kind of outdated. We don't quote, you know we have a lot of whole brain activity. But, but neuro-linguistic programming is a way to get into the brain and figure out why. Why and what to do about it. Sometimes with traditional therapy, you end up talking about your problems. You, look, you, know, you get a lot of empathy. You get a lot of um, being able to get things out, you know, purging, verbally purging uh, with traditional therapy. But that doesn't always fix the problem. <clears throat> and with this, type of, with this type of brain hack, you literally feel different. You literally feel like you just got an upgrade. Uh, a lot of a lot of our behaviors are based off of programming from infancy, and that's great if you're still young. But sometimes we have emotional responses that seem very immature, and that is probably because they are. It's probably because programming that started in infancy and hasn't been updated. And as we've come out of the religion, we have a lot of brain updating to do. And this is a fast way to make sure that we process and get rid of emotions and that we heal it. It uses a cross of, of extreme logic and reasoning. 
and accessing the creative, imaginative, and emotional side. And it's like a blend of both. So it uses, there's about 40 different techniques, about 40 different tools under the umbrella of NLP. And the, the results are lightning fast. If you saw my life story, which was, you know, like JW version of Game of Thrones or Yellowstone or something, you know, it's full of, full of horribleness. I, I, I feel like it saved my life. I feel like that was the brain hack that helped me stabilize myself remain optimistic, create a new future, figure out how to create a new circle of friends, figure out how to forgive the past, leave the past behind me. And I, I, I like to say it's kind of like a rocket ship to healing. Um, NLP, they, the original founders of it, they, 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 and they, they're basically their idea was how does a brain do this? So if this human's brain changes its beliefs or does this, 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 we can take that model we can take those steps and we could teach another brain how to do it. And it's like a fast hack for being able to, to have changes ridiculously fast. Here's a, here's an easy example. So, um, you know, how if, if somebody passes away or, or a pet or, or whatever, we always say, and this is, this is absolutely hundred percent everybody's experience that it gets easier with time. It gets better with time. You know, you have to go through this prolonged grieving process and then eventually little by little, it starts getting better. Okay. The reason why that happens is because there is about six very specific steps that the brain goes through six different phases. And that's why it, it takes a long, takes a long time because the brain is randomly up to chance in the unconscious mind going across, going through these steps. So what NLP did is it took and it analyzed all of these steps. And then we say, we got up, 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 up. All right. So why does it have to suck for years? If we know how the brain progresses from here to here, let's do it in an hour. And now you're done with it. Right. And so that's just a brief example of how NLP works. It fast tracks what the brain is already doing only now we're doing it on purpose instead of leaving it to chance. And that's just, that's just, that's just priceless because why, why we already wasted a lot of time. I don't have time to waste anymore. I want to, I want to hurry up and grow. I want to get it over with. I want to go forward. I want to go forward. I don't want to be, I don't want to be stuck. And there are very specific reasons why we are. It's usually because the brain is, you know, on our computer, we do these loading, 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 loading. <laughs> our brain can do that too. Sometimes we get kind of like frozen in one of those steps and it prolongs it. And it doesn't need to be that way. It absolutely doesn't need to be that way. We can fast track it and then it's gone. Um, I was just working with somebody last week. We'd been talking about procrastination and it's something that he, he, this person has struggled with for a long time. We did a, you know, a 30 minute visualization exercise with some very specific tricks on, on my end of it. And he, he even said, he goes, I thought that was kind of cheesy, but actually, you know, I feel a whole lot better. <laughs> so the, it's a brain hack is what it is. And so being able to use the brain hack before you take the plant medicines is huge in being able to clear up all of those layers. And then when we use that in the integration process, the integration process is hugely important. It's taking what you learned during the plant medicine and closing it, applying it, healing it, understanding. And so we use these techniques too after the fact so that there's an even greater sense of closure, um, discovery. And that's, so that's kind of it in a nutshell. Great explanation. Yeah, really great explanation. Thank you for that. I mean, and again, it comes down to techniques that reach right down into the yeah. subconscious mind. You got to go below the conscious mind if you want to get these fast and permanent results. For exactly. Healing. And, yeah. you know, for the group of you watching that are, you know, coming from the Jehovah's Witnesses, a lot of the witness uh, techniques are <laughs> also reaching down into the subconscious mind. Yeah. That's yeah. how they have so much power over people. Even when yeah. there's things that really just make no sense, but right? you see everybody just follows along because down in the subconscious mind, 
it, it, you know, that's it's just it's just a go time thing. They're not, well, they're, they're not yeah, really thinking using about some it. of these techniques too. Mm -hmm. They're mm -hmm. actually using some of these techniques too. I mean, I can go through Watchtower articles and go, dang, they're doing this and this and this and look at this sentence and look at this sentence. And then you and I were like, dang, how could we have been so stupid? You know, how did we believe this for so long? Well, because they're using brain science to keep us trapped. <laughs> you know, they are also manipulating the mind. I don't know if they're doing it on purpose or if they're just lucky. I mean, like I said, everything that we're that that NLP teaches is things that the brain does anyway. So, you know, maybe they're just coincidentally doing it, but there are very specific reasons for why we stayed in the religion as long as we did and why we believed it as long as we did. And so now this is, this is freedom. This is true freedom. This is, this is, let's take those shackles off, you know, basically to keep in mind that anything that the religion said was bad, you should be questioning why you should be questioning. Why did they say that? What don't they want me to know? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and when you get into these substances, for those of you that have a chance to, to try them out, I guarantee you on the first try, you will see exactly why any religious group and any very controlling government would want these away, far away from anybody, because they do have the power to reframe your perspectives yes. and put you in a position where your, br your brain both consciously and subconsciously is now programmed to push you in the direction that that is best fitting for you so you can live the best life possible for yourself and so that you take care of the other people around you I mean, a lot of people i'm sure you've experienced a lot of people when they do these things they do feel this connection and love intense love for everybody it doesn't matter what religion they are it doesn't matter what politics they're into you love everybody on just the fact that they are a fellow human being and you see how we're all kind of connected in, in some strange way um you know I, 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 yeah i'd love to do just a teeny bit and you can edit this out if you feel like it's not appropriate so we're talking concerning plant medicines and and spirituality we will I, i'll go in there I'll, i'm totally down with going there for just a second 38 years 20, 38 years in the religion, 20 years as a regular pioneer. Man, I went to pioneer school twice. Stephen Lett taught the first pioneer school. Missionaries at Bethel taught the second pioneer school. Man, I studied so hard. I prayed so hard. And I can count like maybe, maybe once that I had some sort of spiritual feeling of wholeness, connectedness, etc. And, you know, in my opinion, a lot of the purpose of religion is to say that they are the conduit to any sort of divine connection. And I think what these plant medicines teach people teach you is you don't need a conduit. You are the conduit. Even the Bible teaches, you know, lots of religions teach, every, maybe even every religion across the universe teaches that we are God's children, that we are made in God's image. And religion has kind of said, oh, yeah, so let me control that. Let me show you how to do it. Let me help you do that. And what the, what the plant medicines do for you is they say they teach you what that means. They teach you that that wholeness, that connectedness, that spirituality is, di is directly there between us and the source in God, the universe, whatever you choose to call it. And I'll, I'll give a couple of examples. Um, I recently, I recently did a plant medicine treatment on somebody who, who had gone through some very intense abuse and they had attempted suicide. And so they, they came to me saying, basically they came to me saying, help me with this because if we can't heal this, I don't want to live. I'm, basically they're going to do it again, do it right. So I, I did the plant medicine treatment and I did an incredibly intensive, intensive, intensive dose, um, about three times more than what I normally do because I felt like their life was on the line. And in this experience, this young man, he just, he started crying and, and laughing at the smallness of trying to take his life. 
And he was just saying, I can't believe how connected I am to everything. I can't believe that, that, that God has walked. I mean, he, the spiritual connection was tangible in this young man. And then afterwards, you know, it's been several months even since then. And even since then, he's just like, he's, he's, he says, I, I just feel like I'm connected to everything. I feel love. I feel, I feel it. And you know what? I think that that saved his life. And, you know, maybe not, we're not all at this bottom of the barrel kind of feeling, but, but what this plant medicine does for our mind is it unlocks what's already there. Because remember, like I said in the beginning, our brain is taking in 11 million bits of information. Where does that expanse come from? You know, maybe it is God. Maybe, maybe that, maybe that is a channel there, right? We're processing 40,000 bits of information and we're consciously only aware of 40. That means that every thought in your head is based on 1,000th, 1,000th of reality. That's why we have to question everything that's in our head. Because whatever belief that you have, you know, beliefs that I'm not good enough, beliefs, whatever, whatever, eyesight gets bad after you turn 40, or whatever, whatever belief that is in there, in your head, you are basing it off of this teeny tiny nugget of what your brain already knows. And, and that opening up that potential, it is life altering in so many ways, in so many ways. And that's just one example. I mean, I could do a whole video of different experiences that people have had with the plant medicines. Maybe we should, because it's I, maybe, maybe the illustrations, the examples kind of help people explain what this is capable of, of doing for people. But yeah, just when you explain it was good. Um, <laughs> dropping some hints there without, without, <laughs> without going too deep. Right, <laughs> right. I, do, I do agree. Yeah, we should do one that's just talking about the going deep on it for people that I want to hear that. Um, and I would just say, I would just add for the people out there that are just terrified of anything having to do with this stuff, I just want to remind you, you've already done it. So each of us in our yeah. brain, we, pr we actually produce in our mind DMT, yeah. which is the strongest of any of these psychedelic substances. We're hallucinating all the time anyway. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's already in your brain. Yeah, every time you imagine worst case scenario, you know, oh, what if this happens or what if this happens or what if Armageddon comes? Dude, you're hallucinating. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, and they um according to science, they um they studied it on on rats, but they don't, you know, the rat brain and the human brain are, are pretty similar in, in terms of the the makeup. Um, so we, we don't know for sure if it's how it is in the human brain, but they 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 theorize that you get two major hits of DMT in your life. Once when you're at the time of your birth and then once at the time of your death. Um, and that's part of the reason why that and just the profound experiences that people have on these things is why it's nicknamed the spirit mo molecule. Right. So if you look up right. DMT, you'll, you'll often see those words associated with it. Um, but yeah, again, you, you're you're producing it in your brain. It's in almost every living animal and plant on this planet. Mm -hmm. There is some amount of that DMT. Right. So um, yeah, so you you already got it. So there's no reason to be scared of it. You've got it, literally running running through you. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So any any other last uh, statements you want to make? Okay. So for those of you that are scared. For those of you that are skeptical, I've been there. I know exactly, exactly, exactly what that feels like. And you know what? Do your research. Feel free to reach out with any questions. We can talk about it. Um, as far I, I do believe that this is this this could be for everybody. When is the question? Maybe it's not something that you're ready for now, but if you're, if you're really wanting to fast forward, fast forward your healing, this is a great tool. This is a great technique. And maybe some of the fear comes from being in a cult because one of their major control tools is fear. 
you know, um, fear of the future, fear of Armageddon, fear of shunning, fear of offending somebody. Dude, I mean, I, I chose my clothes based off of fear of offending somebody, right? All of our conduct, everything is based off of fear. I think when we come out of the religion, I think it's natural to have an, a, a measure of fear because of our brainwashing, because of our programming. But just because you feel it doesn't mean it's real. Just because you feel fear doesn't necessarily mean that it's legit and that you should be frozen because that's what the cult did to us. We've sacrificed a lot for freedom. We have sacrificed family. We have sacrificed our structure. We have sacrificed our beliefs. You know, we're out here we're like, I don't know what the heck I believe. I don't know where I am. I don't know where to go. Okay. So don't get stuck in the, I don't know world. Don't get stuck in pity world, you know, angry world. Don't get stuck in screw them world and let's be on a vendetta against them. You know what? No, let this part of your journey be about you. Let this part of your journey be about healing and going forward as fast as possible. Feel the fear and know that it came from the religion and go forward anyway in whatever path of the healing journey that you take. Always make sure that you're going forward. Don't let them control you anymore. Very, very, very good points. And I'm going to mention it in the intro, but I'll mention it again. Um, that if any of you guys have questions, leave a comment below. We're going to do another video just answering your questions. Because yeah. as like Dina brought up, um, a lot of people leaving these type of religions have fear related to these, these yeah. uh, topics. And oftentimes you fear what you don't understand. So we exactly. can remove that fear just by letting you understand it. And, uh, and yeah, I also like, love what you said. Yeah, you actually changed my perspective a little bit. Just on, you know, it's not that it's not for everybody. It's just for, you know, some people it is for them, but they're just not ready for it at this yeah. time. Yeah. So uh, that's that's a good way of, of thinking. I, I do well, like that perspective. Also, too, part of the part of doing the coaching in advance helps me figure out what doses people need. Mm. A lot, of, you know. I know there's retreats where it's just kind of like one shot. This is your dose. Here's your dose. And that I don't think that's totally fair. I think there are some people who need the slower introductions first. Yes. So yeah. that coaching process, you know, if somebody is really like, I really want to do this. I really want to do this. I really want to do this but I'm really scared. Well, I'm not going to give you the skyrocket. Do you know what I'm not going to do? <laughs> I'm not going to scare you too bad. You know, we're going to we'll do this gently. Well, we'll figure out what is the safest, what feels the best. What do you need now? You know, and maybe later on, if you decide you want to, you want, but you're ready for the higher doses is you're ready, bring it on. All right, then we'll bring it on. But you know what? This is customized. This is not, sorry, dude, you have to take, 20 grams whether you want to or not you know this is all whatever you whatever you need whatever's good for you at this point in the journey is what we do and that's that's how you want to do it yeah you, you <laughs> want to do it with it. and that's why it's also good you know like, like you brought out um we're, we're not we don't have any any history from being in the amazonian tribe we're not we don't have that that history with it um right. so it is good to come to a place like what you have set up that right. is looking at these things, understanding them from a Western mindset and what we go through in our Western world, but put using the plants to connect with us oh, in the yeah. proper way for that's there's, right for us. There's, there's so much to talk. There's so much to talk about. You know, even even talking about just that that aspect. When we do the plant medicines, we're combining this also with you know binaural beats. We're combining this with music therapy, massage therapy. You know, this is this is a this is a fusion. I don't know that I don't know that anybody else is doing a fusion like this. I mean, I've really taken the 20 years of the coaching experience and understanding, knowing humans. I have studied the Bible with thousands of people, and you know that studying the Bible with people, you learn about people and how their brain works and what their problems are. So even aside from the coaching, I know people, I know how we are. And I've been in the healing field for, for almost 20 years now. And this is a fusion of taking these plant medicines and mixing it with the best of what healing has to offer. So I like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I like it too. Yeah. And I will just say for the people out there that it really isn't for, 
for the people out there that have a, a history, family history of major mental illnesses, where it's actually recommended not to not to touch these things, because it could introduce um, some in some cases permanent psychosis. Um, even for those people, and for the people that just live in a in a place that it's illegal, and you don't plan on ever traveling, I just want to say that there is other ways to get to the same place. There's yeah. certain you just have yeah. to do the research on it. There's certain yeah. breathing methods. There's certain meditation techniques that'll get you this, to the same place. Um, well, even, but these plants are definitely clients, a trap. Even some of my clients, there's no way they're ever going to come down here, and that's mm -hmm. fine. That's fine because even with the NLP brain hacks that we do, you it, you know it might take a little bit longer, but I've, we've, I just had a lady and we, we did this major phobia, major phobia of snakes is gone in 45 minutes, you know, procrastination, abuse. We can eliminate these things, even just, even just with the brain hacks. So don't, don't hesitate to ask questions just because you don't have a passport and you're not ready to leave the country. Um, as far as I generally recommend with people that we do the coaching for at least two to three months before you're ready for a plant medicine experience. But like I said, this is customizable. So I've had people that I've worked with for a year before they feel like they're ready for, for a, a, a plane ticket down here. You know, and then on the other hand, too, I've had people that feel like the coaching's enough. They don't need it. They don't need the plant medicine. They're not ready for it, not interested. And they've progressed and they're ready and they're done. And that's great. That's, that's absolutely great, too. So whatever works. Yeah, all that matters is that you are just again, yeah, you're on your that subconscious mind. You're on your journey. You're coming there. forward. Yes, yeah, and then and removing the roadblocks that are in your way. Right. A lot of times, those roadblocks are not on the outside; they're they're within you. One hundred percent. Yeah. So, man, that was deep. Uh, that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much again for coming back on. And uh, I definitely look forward to everybody's questions. Uh, and uh, we'll do another ask video. Ask lots of questions. Yeah, ask lots of questions, please. <laughs> ask ask questions that you would be afraid to ask. And we will do our best to answer it in the, yep. in the follow up to, to this. So. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so I hope you guys really, really enjoyed that interview. I know, again, it's it's very deep. And for some of you out there, this is going to be way off the grid. But I also know for some of you out there, this is going to take you down a path that's going to lead to some profound healing in a way that you would not have even thought of otherwise. So I want to once again thank Dina for coming on, talking about these subjects, spreading accurate information about these subjects, especially talking to a, an audience of people that came from a high control religious group where our only teaching about these topics was that it was bad, it was evil, it would open you up to demons. And here, as you've learned in this video, that's not the case at all. In fact, it opens you up to profound, deep, and most importantly, permanent emotional and mental healing. As I've said in the interview, I myself have had these experiences and it is a big, big part of why I am the way I am today and the path that I'm on and the trajectory that I'm, that I'm heading down. So all that being said, again, if you have questions about these topics, leave them in the comments below. We will do our best in the next video to help answer those questions. But with all that, I wanna thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your time and I will catch you in the next one.